one of the great things about transhumanism is it's kind of what we call transhumanitarianism. There's this idea that we're really trying to help people. You know, we're really trying to solve suffering, solve medical issues. And uh, exoskeleton technology is one of the most important. About a third of everybody on planet Earth has some type of mobility issue. So exoskeleton technology is really leading the way in terms of getting people to, um, you know, be able to be mobile again and do things like that. And what's really interesting is also that you know, you think you can't climb Mount Everest, but there's a chance sometime in the future you may be able to climb Mount Everest just because you have exoskeleton technology. There's also the idea that um, you might be able to run a marathon. As I wrote recently for the New York Times, you know, you get the exoskeleton technology working well enough, um, you'll be able to run on water. I mean, this stuff is really incredible. So can you imagine running a marathon on water? Well, this is what, you know, people want to do with exoskeleton technology. Now, I would say the biggest thing about transhumanism, where a lot of people go for getting into pocketbooks of investors, is really when you start talking about disabilities. A huge amount of people around the world have disabilities. So we already have things like this, the Argus 2, which allows a blind person to basically see, navigate streets, go into uh, rooms and things like that. So I think, you know, overcoming disability is really a huge part of also what we're doing. And that goes as far as cochlear implants with deafness. We don't really have deafness anymore on planet Earth. People that are born that can't hear um, end up having a cochlear implant put in, if, if they're allowed. There are some cultural differences too. But deafness as a, as, a, as a disability has been mostly wiped out due to radical technologies. Again, transhumanist technologies. And of course, one of these things is putting implants in your body, implants in your brain, implants in your arms, as I have in my hand, and doing all sorts of things. We call this biohacking, where you actually put all sorts of stuff in yourself to monitor what's going on and also to help you do things that you wouldn't be able to do, like hear or see. So the idea of brain plants is really complex. I was doing an interview earlier and they were asking about the future of work. And you know, where I'm from, Silicon Valley in Los Angeles, California area, um, there's a couple different companies now like Neuralink with Elon Musk that are working on basically brain implants in order to allow your brain to interface directly with machine intelligence. Now, why is this important? Well, machine intelligence is important because, you know, already like in Wall Street, for example, there's a bunch of mid-level traders that are being wiped off the floors. And the reason is, is because they can't compete with algorithms. So what a lot of kind of entrepreneurs want to do is in order to have humans keep up with machines, they want to merge our brains with machines so that we can start thinking in real time in the internet. So the thing you have in your pocket, cell phone, smartphone, basically can be put in through your head through an implant or a headset. Already in Florida, they're doing things like racing drones around a track and stuff like that, um, just using brainwave technology. And um, already you can have conversations in your mind with people through brainwave, uh, uh, headsets and brainwave uh, implants and things like that. And we're going to get to a point, you know, Elon Musk says there'll be a commercial device in five years. I don't know if that's the case, but definitely within 10 years, there's a good chance that there will be a commercial device on the market that will allow you to talk to your friend or give a speech in real time like I'm doing now, where people would actually hear it and listen and maybe answer back and you would hear it in your head. So. The, the, the question, are we going to get brain implants? It, it's almost 100% yes.